Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Danny and today I'd like to show you how to make a progress scroll for your CMS or blog posts inside of Framer. This is my first Framer tutorial so I'm excited to kind of dive in here and show you guys how this works. Uh, but as you can see, as I scroll through the blog post, I have this nice little progress bar that is affected by my scroll. So as I scroll through the post, it'll show me how close I am to finishing reading. And you'll notice that it works nicely on mobile, so it is responsive. Um, it also works on tablet, of course. So let's get into this and I'll break it down and show you how it works. So to start off, we just want some text. I can just type out um, anything random for now. And then I'm gonna put this inside of a stack. So that's option, command, return on MacBook. And now I'm just going to add about 24 pixels padding. And then I want this to fit my contents um, on the width and the height. So this is gonna kind of act as my content. And now what I can do here is I typed in something random, but I can actually just set a variable. So if you go into your pages, and if you go onto your blog pages, then you'll see that you're now within the CMS section and this is a CMS page. So if you don't have it like that, you can convert it to a CMS page, but assuming it already is a CMS page, then you can just select a variable that you'd like. So in this case, I want the title, and then if you wanted the date or any other information, you could add that in as well. Um, next up, I just want to add a little bit of navigation. So I have my left arrow there. And now I'm just going to duplicate this, Command D, and use my arrow keys to move it over. And now I'm going to put this inside of another frame. So I'll just press Option Command F, or Option Command Enter, rather. And now I have that inside of a frame, and now I can just delete the icon inside. So what this is going to allow me to do is kind of have those even proportions so that as I expand this, um, I don't have to account for these extra pixels over here. So I'm just going to set this to be a fixed width real quick so we can drag it out and see how it's working. And I want to set this text here to fill my container. And I want to also set it to be centered. So now that my text is filling the container, I have this other container over here that's accounting for the extra space added by the back arrow navigation. And now if I expand this, everything should be working. So next up, we need to add in a container for our scroll bar, and then we're gonna put our scroll bar inside of it. And then we'll add the effect for it to actually work. So draw out a frame, hold or press F on your keyboard, draw out a frame. I want it to be about three or four pixels high. We'll try four pixels for now. And I'm just gonna get rid of the fill on that. I'm actually going to get rid of the fill on this container as well. And then I'll just bring them together and we can put a fill on the entire thing. So option command return on Mac. We'll put these into a container together that's a stack. And now I'm just going to make this fill whatever I want. So in this case, a little bit of a light gray might work. And I also want to make sure that I delete that extra gap that Framer has added for me. And I will set this height to fit the contents. Okay, so now within this container that I've added down here, um, where is it? this frame down here. I'm just going to name this my progress bar. And up here, I'm just going to name this, um, we'll just call it blog content for now. And now this is my progress header. Try and keep things organized because as this gets more complicated, we'll want to make sure we know where everything is. And now I'm just going to draw out any frame, it doesn't really matter for now. And I'm gonna give it a fill of black. So now I'm just gonna drop this inside of my progress bar frame, set it to center, center. And now I just want this to fill. 
and I'll just set it to relative 100%. So now that bar is set to be full 100%. And let's just make sure everything is scaling nicely. So that looks great. So now I can actually go ahead and drop this into my page. So I'm going to delete the one that I had previously. And one thing you want to make sure that you're doing is formatting your page properly before you put this progress bar in. So the only thing you really have to do is make sure the entire post is inside of a container. I believe Framer does this for you already, but then you just need to come down here, add a scroll section, and in this case, I'll just name it post. So you do want a section and now I'll just drag this into my page. Nope, not there. Let's undo that. Command X, I can just select the page and then Command V and we'll drop it in here. And now I wanna make sure that I set this to fill my container. All right, so now that we have our header, we wanna actually start adding in the functionality and the animations and effects. So what we wanna do is as we scroll through the page, we want the header to kind of drop down nicely into place and then we'll add the functionality that makes the progress bar work. But for now, let's just select our progress header and we're just going to add in a scroll animation. So I'll add in my scroll animation. I want my trigger to be for that section that we created. So the section is the actual blog post below. And we, what we want to happen is as I scroll and that blog post hits the top of my viewport, then the header slides down. I want it to replay and I don't want it to scale in. We're actually going to do something custom here. So the opacity is one, the scale is one, and the offset is going to be whatever the size of our container is. So in this case, negative 71. And we also need to make sure that this progress header is set to sticky and that's going to allow it to stick in place as the content scrolls behind. We also want to make sure that the overflow of all of our containers surrounding are set to visible. If they're not, then the sticky actually doesn't work. So as we scroll, we see as I hit the blog post hits the top of my viewport, then this header scrolls down, slides down very nicely. It looks clean. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is obviously start animating the um, progress bar. So the first thing we want to do is on that surrounding progress bar container that we created earlier, make sure the overflow is set to hidden, of course, and then we want to add layout. I want this to be horizontal, center, center. And now for my bar, I want to add in a scroll transform. So what we're going to basically say is when we're scrolling through this blog post, transform the size of this scroll bar. So on section in view, the section is the post. And then for the viewport, when the blog post reaches the bottom, that's when we want our transform to stop. So we're going to go from one opacity to scale. The scale of this right now is set to 100% relative. We want to bring it all the way down to 0 0.01 as a start, so that's where it comes from. And it's gonna go all the way up to one. So that should make it work just like that. You'll notice it pops down nicely on scroll. And as I scroll, wherever I'm at in my scroll, it kind of gives me that progress indicating where I'm at in the blog post. And you'll notice that this works regardless of the size of my content. So if I bring in a much, much bigger blog post, I'll just double the size of this. So now it's much bigger, save it. And if I go back to my blog post now, you'll see that that progress indicator is going to scroll just a little bit slower than it was before. If you have a smaller blog post, obviously it's gonna scroll very, very fast. Um, and this should also be working nicely on mobile. If it's not, like it's not right now, then that's because 
we need to set this inner container that I have here. So right now it's set to fixed. So that bar needs to be set to 100%. So if it's not set to 100%, then it's not going to work. Let's try again. Beautiful. And it'll work on my different displays as well. So that's basically it. Um, you can obviously customize this so much more and make it so much more unique than what I'm showing you here, but this hopefully will give you a good jumping off point to make it your own. Uh, but I hope you guys found this useful, helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.